twice. <clears throat> what I'm going to do now is just go into a little bit more detail about the four things we want changed in the MDF and why we want them changed. The first thing we're calling on the council to do is amend the LDF to say no green belt development. Yay! Yay! Green belt should not be sacrificed to what we call the false god of economic <laughs> development. Yep. Yeah. Economies go up and down. Benefits are very short term, whereas damage to the environment is permanent. Yeah. Perhaps we could accept some minor changes to the green belt boundaries. No. 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 Just a minute. Just a minute. The punchline. They were drawn up almost 40 years ago when our way of life was different. Yeah. The layout of our urban areas was different. And our concern for the environment was just starting to grow to what it is today. Some areas that aren't green belt really should be green belt. But our council says it isn't possible to designate new areas of green belt. <laughs> so we say, no give, no yeah. take. Yeah. 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 If you can't create new areas of green belt to compensate for what we lose, you can't take any that's there already. Yeah. 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 You can't hijack green belt land on the scale proposed for East East and South Dewes Bridge and Cooper Bridge. Green belt is there for a purpose. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. It's for farming, but it's also to stop communities growing, growing together, together to create yeah. one great yeah. megalopolis. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. 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 And what yeah. about our wildlife? Yeah. Wildlife indeed. <laughs> the second point we want them to change is we want the housing numbers reduced from 22,470 to 18,000. No, no, no. <laughs> Why do we say 18,000? Because that's the rate of building that's actually happened in Kirkland for the past 10 years. So it's status quo, if you like. Since the LDF first started, we've got the housing targets <coughs> down from 38,000 to 22,470. But it's still far too high. It's still 25% higher pro rata than Sheffield's MDF. It's 25% higher than the number of houses built each year over the last 10 years. And it's a whopping 80% higher than the number of houses being built this year. The harsh reality is that the LDF is based on population and housing statistics from 2008. And it doesn't reflect the ongoing economic downturn and virtual collapse of the housing market. It doesn't make any sense at all to base the LDF on unrealistic, excessively high and unsustainable figures and then cast them in tablets of stone for 18 years. Wouldn't it be more sensible, we say, to start with relatively low figures <coughs> that reflect the real life, actual circumstances today, and only designate land for development if and when it was necessary to do so? Yeah. 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 None of us has a crystal ball, so I wonder why Kirk Police Council thinks it has. So we've asked the council several times, why can't the plan be more realistic and flexible to cope with changing requirements of the 18 years of the plan? Instead of making the plan as big and ambitious as possible to cover all eventualities. It's how the private sector would do it. Why can't Kirk please learn from the private sector? We have absolutely right. My final point is we haven't had a response from Kirk and his council to that proposition. Yeah. 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 James.
The third point we want changed is a fundamental one. We want a higher priority given to brownfield development and regeneration. Yeah. Yeah. The most recent amendments in the MDF, that's the ones that appeared last Friday to be considered next Tuesday, or was it last Friday? In the past few days, anyway, have at long last included some detailed proposals for release of brownfield land before greenfield land. Good. I hasten to add that these were not in previous versions. However, it still doesn't go far enough. And the result after 18 years is not much different. <coughs> the greenfield development just happens a bit later. Kirkley's proposals for brownfield development as a proportion of the total planned are still far less than neighbouring authorities. And I'll give you some figures to back that up. Sheffield LDF plans that 88% of the development will be on brownfield land. Cornerdale plans 85%. Leeds, 75%. Wakefield 65%, Bradford 60%. The figure for Kurt plays, even after the latest changes, is 49%. Oh. Shame. 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 Now come to a, a fairly technical point here. Kurt Lees have not made any allowance in what plans for brownfield land that comes available during the lifetime of the plan. That is, perhaps a mill, no longer required, comes available for redevelopment. <coughs> Kirklees have not made any allowance for that whatsoever. Other councils in West Yorkshire have made allowances, and the figure I've been given for Leeds is they've allowed 500 houses per annum to be built on land that they don't even know is going to be available. Why can't Kirk leave? As we see it, the basic problem is that the council and council officers just don't seem to have the will to create a planning environment where the emphasis on urban regeneration and on brownfield rather than greenfield development. Yes. The fourth point we want them to incorporate is about neighbourhood planning. And I said in St George's Square, I'd tell you why that's important. Kirklees have barely mentioned neighbourhood planning in the MDF. And for those of you who don't know, it's a new level in the planning process, giving local people the right to prepare their own plans and say which specific sites should be developed in their community. <laughs> But neighbourhood plans have to integrate with the MDF. And they need to be prepared before stage two. That's the site allocation, which Kirklees is planning for 2013. If the neighbourhood plans haven't been prepared before then, Kirklees planners will decide where the development is going to go in your community. Not flaming like As opposed no to you being given no the chance way. to decide it. So why have Kirk Lee's council set out in the LDF exactly how the neighbourhood planning process will be integrated? Why haven't they given neighbourhood planning a very high priority? Could it be that they don't want local communities to have their rights to local determination enshrined in the LDF? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. 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 And I say this to Kirk Lee's council now. If you don't address this issue, Clearly, in the LDF now, whatever protests you've got about the LDF now will pale into insignificance with the protests you're going to get. That's right! Yeah. 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 Well said. <laughs> My final point that I want to put to you is not about what's in the LDF, it's about how Kirklees have gone about it. It 
It's about the process. Yes, too right. And let me be very blunt. Curse Please Council seem to have no idea about what constitutes a reasonable level of public involvement and consultation on such an important issue as the MBN. Shame. No idea, full stop. As Kay yeah. can, quite some time ago we offered to help Kirk Please on this, but our offer wasn't taken up. During the earlier public consultation, the council insists that they sent leaflets out to 92% of homes. <laughs> well, 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 our investigations show that over 90% of households did not get a leaflet. The council organised consultation evening, but they were few and far between. Worse still, they were organised in a way that effectively quarantined the dissent and left members of the public completely dissatisfied. Yeah. Typical. When the LDF did come before the council on November 23rd last year, 37 members of the public spoke passionately against specific aspects of the LDF on behalf of their respective communities, only to be completely ignored by the council. Yeah. Yeah. when it yeah. came to making a decision and making amendments to the core strategy. I'm also sorry to say that the conduct of many councillors on the day was quite simply completely disgraceful. Yeah. 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 The bottom line is that the intention to ratify the LDF on 6th of March denies the electorate the opportunity provided for under delegate legislation for the consultation. More importantly, the objections raised previously after lack of substance or lack of soundness of the LDF have not been considered or have been ignored. <laughs> Careful legal words there, please note. And suffice to say that papers are already being prepared with the intention of seeking a judicial review about the way that Kirkley's Council have approached this MBA. Brilliant. Yeah. Excellent. Yeah. Yeah. Calm, take note. Final point is, thank you once again for coming and for listening to me. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.